Hi, you guys. Um, whenever you see this, I hope that you are doing well. Um, I have been making a lot of different videos um, about profits, the role of profits, the function of profits in the office. I have been talking about um, the digital landscape um, and where profits operate, the um, cultural landscape, the governmental landscape, and just all spheres of life, you know, really where um, profits are needed from our educational systems to our government systems to all institutions, disciplines, studies, the list goes on, right? So I wanted to talk about the types of profits. So now that we understand a little bit about the difference between being an actual profit who is authorized, ordained, um, and, and positioned into a certain sphere of influence, um, let's talk about what a profit is. So the word profit in our language comes from the words navi or nabi um, which was used in the old testament um, it's hebrew and it means a seer or to call or to summon and in english as the word has been broken down even more from its you know kind of like ancient um hebrew you know wording or whatever the case may be <laughs> in its simplest form the word means spokesperson or a mouthpiece um, I love that because I work professionally um, in the field of communications. Um, I've told you guys before that one of those spheres where a profit is meant to operate is in the world of education and communication. And so I love that. I'm also a professor. So knowing that, you know, being a spokesperson, a mouthpiece, you know, um, prophetically, you know, um, it your role and your function can even span what you do for a living so it's a lot of you know people out there who work in the field of education and might not even realize that there might be a prophetic calling on their life you know prophets are born they're not really made but you know it's interesting to me to see some of these parallels between what i do what i like how i am how god made me and, and as i take on my mantle it's no coincidence you know all the things in my life that have happened up until now the trajectory of my life my life purpose my life path you know it, it's good to see that also chose c-h-o-z-e chose i'm not really sure what that pronunciation would be but it's also hebrew and it means seer and navi um n-a-v-i or n-a-b-i both of the forms have been used historically but NABI slightly changes the meaning to bubble uh, forth. So when we think about a prophet, a prophet brings forth a word. All of these words for prophet make sense and it's clear why this is the word for prophet. You know what I mean? So in the beginning, before the church was ever really established, you guys know we have like the Old Testament, you know, um, before there was ever actually like a physical building or before there was the Acts church or the New Testament church, pretty much you had two uh, two positions um, that most uh, believers uh, fell into and that was either prophet or priest. Um, Samuel is an example of the merging of these offices and we see um, on a broader scale through Samuel's journey, um, and I do have my notes, we see um, the functions of a prophet through Samuel's story. So if you aren't familiar with Samuel's story, you should read it. And um, there are some different types of prophets. There are different ways in which prophets function, their responsibilities. But to be honest, the, the main ones that we're gonna take a look at today are the sanctuary or the church prophet. Some people say the local prophet. Um, the the staff prophet who generally operates you know in your local church setting they they are meant to function in the church we also see the judge prof, prophet or the prophet who renders judgment the militaristic prophet who would be like a Deborah who was also a judge so she carried kind of like a dual mantle um, and then the intercessory prophet these are some of the um, the types of prophets that we see throughout the Old Testament, um, the New Testament, and at its core, these are some of those um, responsibilities um, and, and where a prophet kind of functions. So prophets as agents, as legitimized, uh, authorized kingdom officials, um, you'll find them typically in these roles in God's 
uh, government, either as executives, administrators, ministers, generals, chairpersons, or governors. So um, I wanted to give you that background um, because I, I'm constantly, you know, uh, uh, amazed at the prophetic um authority that god has given his people i love this system of the kingdom i love how the prophetics work i love how this agency you know the prophetics works um in the kingdom so i also want to talk about a type of prophet that um I i'm sure some of you have not heard of but it's important to know what a shamar prophet is now one of the first examples of the Shamar prophet is Adam. So in Genesis 2 and 15, um, we find that Adam, um, you know, we, we know how man was formed and everything from the, from the earth and the dust and, you know, God formed him. But in Genesis 2 and 15, Adam is then given instruction. He is given prophetic assignment. And his assignment is to defend, to keep guard of um, the Garden of Eden, to worship, to watch. And he was also a seer to make sure that things within that garden function the way that they were supposed to so why why is this important we don't see the bible say clearly that adam was a prophet we know that he is a prophet because of some some things that we have to study when we do a study on the eschatology we see that from the beginning of time, God established his prophets his word even says that he's not going to do a thing unless he gives that insight to his prophets his servants you know the prophets first so let's break this down a little bit so adam adam had this assignment right in the garden of eden eden broken down from hebrew means paradise when we ha hear the 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 word paradise let's break down the first part of the word para 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 has to deal with the spirit that's where we get words from like paranormal so the Garden of Eden, they, they're, the Holy Spirit, the, the, the Spirit of God, even at this time, w w was in the earth, you know. Um, God's Spirit, the presence of God was there. And so when Adam was mantled to this assignment, he had to tend to the things of the Spirit, not just what we think of in the Garden, but from a spiritual perspective, Adam was given oversight into things in the spirit so shamar prophets of today are given oversight into what to tend to in the spirit so adam was put to sleep right and when we think of sleep uh we think of dreams these are forms of communication and ways that the spirit speaks to us so through dreams through visions through daydreams adam was put in a very deep sleep so the thing about this the symbolism there is that a shamar prophet can function very well in the subconscious and in the supernatural like we said the para the spirit the paranormal um and these are people who can instantly go into a space with God. They can go into that presence of God. Moses is a great example of a Shamar prophet. Moses would go to the mountain and just be in the presence of God. And he would come out with downloads. With He would come out with the understanding of, you know, what God was speaking to the people, the children of Israel. So when it comes to being a Shamar prophet, you are also in charge of what comes out of you. So in that deep sleep, Adam, um, he was sleeping and God took something out of him. We know it now as his rib and then Eve, you know, came out of him, who he called woman. And he, uh, even um, gave responsibility to woman. So if you aren't careful when you are a Shamar prophet, what can come out of you can be destructive. Eve herself wasn't destructive, but she was tempted um, by the devil. We know this. Um, so when, when you're in your sacred places with God, when he has put you in a deep sleep, in a trance, when you are in the presence of God, when you are covered by God, when you are in the presence of God in your prayer closet, however you commune with God and with the spirit, your visions, what comes forth out of you, that vision produces seeds and those seeds go out and get planted in other areas so we know that adam and eve were kind of like the the, the beginning of mankind they birthed 
what we know is mankind, right? So we have to be careful about what comes out of us as Shammah prophets because we are responsible for it. And what seeds it goes out and plants and produces, you know, God help, holds us responsible for that. So we have to tend to those visions, those words, those downloads that we get from God, right? So also, in, you know, um, dealing with... Uh, the Shemar prophet, the spirit literally breathes into us power anointing and causes us to speak out and to protect the kingdom. Um, when we are in worship and when we are in that sacred place, um, God usually uh, shows us what we need to see, what's covered, because worship covers us. We are protected when we are in a space of worship. You know, we are clothed and clothed you know back in the day the hebrews when they were in worship when they were in the temples they would cover themselves they would clothe themselves a certain way so we are covered and there's a certain grace that covers us when we are in worship so a shamar prophet when they are in worship they get so much so if you find that you love worship and i'm going to talk about some of the characteristics of a shamar prophet you might actually be this type of, of, of prophet but our worship and when we're in these sacred spaces with God, they help us to produce a word and cultivate it, send it out and protect it. So if God has awakened you, you know, many, many of you know uh, when, where and how, you know, there was that first moment when you had an encounter with God and God started to plant seeds. He started to put downloads on you. He started to show you things. You know, many of us know where we were when we realized that we had that calling on us. Um, most people are scared of it when God starts downloading stuff on them, some Shamar prophets don't even need to be in a place of worship. For me, I can be walking in a group of people, see something, get a download, and it's there. And that's another characteristic uh, of the Shamar prophet that I'm going to talk about. But some people run from it because the Shamar prophet, because they deal with the spirit, the para, usually the paranormal, they are able to see angels, devils, demons. Um, they're able to see people's auras um i personally can see people's spirit man which let's call it that instead of aura but when when i look at people sometimes especially when i am in a place where the spirit is being stirred i usually see a glow on people a gold glow and, and that tells me like certain things about a person i or sometimes i'll see a blue glow um it, it just depends on what god is showing me but i can literally see people's spirit man and it's almost like just an inch or so out from them glowing around them and you know a lot of people can be scared of that that ability to have a connection to the spirit world like that but that's what a shamar prophet has they can go into the spirit realm on that level and if you've been given this gift you need to shamar it you need to protect it because it's invaluable to the kingdom so how do you know if you're a shamar prophet here's some of the characteristics you have a heart to worship you love worship you can pray in the spirit for hours <laughs> even you know, your prayer language is very important um, to a Shamar prophet because, um, you know, that's how we receive mysteries from God, secrets from God. You know, um, that's how we are built up on our most holiest of faith. You know, um, our prayer language is so important to being a Shamar prophet. So if you know that your prayer language is activated, it's strong and God, you know, it, it, it just constantly, you know, speaks back and forth to you. Um, through your prayer language and you're speaking up to him and he's speaking back down to you that's a great quality of knowing that you might be a Shamar prophet if you get visions and downloads you can see spirits you know um, that sounds creepy to most people but you might be a Shamar prophet because God deals with you on the spiritual level in a in the spiritual realm he has opened you up to those things I if you guys go back and watch some of my videos about my deliverance and stuff when I was in the world and I was in new ageism and I could read tarot and um I, I was a Reiki practitioner, you know, I would get around people and I could see all sorts of things about them. I can still do it because my gifting had nothing to do with new ageism. It's a gift from God. Um, and it's this sort of Shamar anointing that's on me, but I, I'm able to operate in the spirit world so that I can see all sorts of things, people's dead relatives and stuff. And normally I would tell people stay away from any spirit that's saying, Hey, I'm your grandma. I'm your this, but I have talked to people and literally a spirit came out of them and said, I am such and such, such, such and such. You gotta be careful with dealing with familiar spirits and everything. But when you are a Shamar prophet, you are 
able to understand this stuff god might take you to places uh, subconsciously um to a specific place time space um sometimes god will show you things in your dream that will take you to a place where it's something that happened in the past is something that's going to happen in the future or something that's happened in the present but god had to take you there so you could see what's going on i have been catapulted to the past and i'm not talking about astral projecting and astral traveling and stuff this is all god is what i'm talking about but if those are things that have happened to you where god has taken you to a specific place in your dream and a vision whatever you might be called to be a shamar prophet because you are able to see things in the spirit being able to see people's spirit man the tears the holes in their spirit where their spirit is being depleted you know you can feel or you have a gift of healing which the gift of healing is super super duper supernatural and, and it's almost paranormal it can't really be explained naturally so um like i said i was a reiki practitioner i could touch people put my hands on them and i knew if they had a a, a previously broken bone in their body if they were previously in an accident previously what their medical conditions were things like that again in the world it was called something else but in god this is how god operates these are the gifts and ministries and facilities of the holy spirit and how the holy spirit operates so you know if you were able to see these things um i remember i was working in retail and we had a new hire and i was talking to her and god immediately you know just placed a download on me about her past where she used to live that she was on drugs that she was stripping stuff like that you know the uh, although it's the operation operating in the gift of a word of knowledge where god is you know telling you things that you wouldn't normally know with your own mind you know these are the makings of a shamar prophet um the gifts of a shamar prophet can easily be confused with being a psychic medium a spiritist or a new ages so you also have to be careful and tread lightly on some of these topics because some people go down the rabbit hole of exploring the supernatural and then they didn't got completely taken out of god i was one of those people nobody was really telling me how to move and operate in my gifts the new ages to me i saw them with power and all of that doing things that i had been doing since i was a child being able to see things i have been a seer since i was a child so i flocked to that i'm back in the body of christ but you have to be careful if you do have the calling of a shamar prophet on you um and other people don't know what to do with you they don't know if you came from heaven or hell if you find that your friends are confused by your giftings you know a lot of people might look at you as being a little weird a lot of people might look at you as being a little spooky you know a lot of times you know people say you know as church folks we got to stop trying to spook people out but some of us we really can't help it because we are shamar prophets and sometimes people don't know what to do with you because of this anointing so those are some types of prophets that i wanted to cover with you most importantly the shamar prophet because i feel like most churches are not doing a deep dive into what it means to be a shamar prophet so i hope that this blesses you all and I will see you all in another video.